Hey folks, welcome to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. Today we're taking a look at Dawn of Peacemakers. Dawn of Peacemakers is brought to you by Snowdale Design. It plays one to four players, ages 12 and up, and each game takes one to two hours to play. Great. Well, in Dawn of Peacemakers, you are actually one of four different peacemakers that are trying to bring calm to the realm. There are two warring factions, the Ocelots and the Macaws, and it's up to you to save the day. Now there are two ways to play Down a Peacemaker. There's a skirmish mode and there's a campaign mode. The campaign mode is played cooperatively and there are 12 scenarios. Now each scenario in the campaign mode has a variety of starting positions and characteristics. Everything is played on this board, but the terrain tiles will be set up differently at the beginning of each campaign. These terrain tiles have things like highlands, they have rivers, uh, towers, uh, fortresses, and forests, so forth. Each one of those give different bonuses or um, change the characteristic of how the game is played. Additionally, the troop types and the troop setup are different for each scenario. Right. Now lastly, there is an overriding uh, win, uh, win condition. Right. You're always trying to get the sides to come to a truce where they mutually withdraw from yeah. the battle because your goal is to point out to them that, hey, war is, is not it's a good not thing. not a good thing, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's very important that you don't let either side actually win and the other side surrender. So the, right. the, the goal of every game is going to be to achieve that, that truce between the two sides. But each scenario may have additional win conditions that will change the way you, you achieve that victory. These warring armies, the Ocelots and the Macaws, have motivation tracks. These motivation tracks are what you will try to manipulate in order to cause the armies to withdraw and hopefully not surrender. Now, one of the ways to get motivation to drop on either side is to strategically have troops fall in battle. And there are damage markers that get placed next to these troops on the battlefield until they die, which then they are moved to the defeated units track. Now, this might seem bad at first, but this is definitely a way to get your motivation track to move in favor of the peacemakers. You don't want units to die, but you know, there's a, there's a balance there that you have to, there's some trade-off you have to deal with. So, and then it's not just defeated troops, but sometimes some of the leaders, when their health falls below half, it will cause the motivation track to move as well. Also, you have to be very careful with some of the leaders. If they fall in battle, that can cause a side to surrender. The actions of each army are determined by order decks. Every order has two halves. The first half is the ploy. The ploy determines the speed of the order. That can range from being slow to normal to fast and even unknown where the speed is determined by the roll of a dice. The other half is the task part. The task determines what type of action or type of order is taken. It can be to move or to, uh, to strike mm -hmm. or to cover and take a defensive stance. The task half also determines which type of troop uh, performs that order. Now, the speed is very critical right? because whoever has the, the fastest speed is the one who gets to act first. Exactly. And what's also neat about these decks is that basically it's an analog AI for each of the armies, which is a really neat aspect of this game. It is. That prevents you from having to perform any of the army's actions, and you can take the role of the title of the game, which is being a peacemaker. Peacemaker. Yep. All right, let's take a closer look at some of these units. You'll notice on the card there are several things of note. At the top of the card, you'll see the unit name and title. Then, the stars indicate the rank. Also, you have the offense rating, the range rating, the defense, the health, any special abilities, and, if you are playing skirmishes, the skirmish cost. Now, I'd like to remind everyone again that this is a prototype, but the actual Kickstarter will have miniature figures here. Each miniature figure will have detachable bases. And these bases will come in three different types. There'll be the, the basic round one, there will be a starburst pattern, and there'll be a cog pattern. Right. Will, there'll be a set of these three for each of the armies. One in red, one in blue. Who knows, maybe there'll be others coming along. That's we don't right. know. There's surprises <laughs> coming surprises. up, and we really can't tell you anything more. In any case, 
different troops are given different base types. And this is what allows you to uh, determine how the task part of each order controls the appropriate troops. So for example, the task might say, move all the round or the, all the troops with the round base mm -hmm. forward one, or it might say, all the troops with the starburst base attack, perform strike actions. So uh, these bases uh, allow you to have some flexibility each game in how the troops are assigned and controlled. When you're playing in campaign mode, you're playing as one of four different peacemakers, each of a different animal type. The way you influence the flow of the battle is to make use of the resource cards that only the peacemakers can play. Right. These resource cards all have icons on them. And at the, the first icon at the top looks like a book. It is influence. And you can play cards against influence either from you or your, your other fellow players can jump in and add influence. And what it allows you to do is look at the order deck and it can be from either side. And then when you pull those cards, then you have the ability to stack the deck, which is pretty interesting because then you can affect the speed or the task that is going to happen. Next up, is the icons that look like a foot. And basically it's simply as that, is that you can move your, your character or your peacemaker, you can move him to spots anywhere on the board. And you may need to do that because a lot of the time when you're using influence, you have to be in a space with a certain troop to use your influence. Now the third thing you can do with your peacemaker card is fortify. And what this means is that you get to put fortify tokens on that particular hex and add defensive value to whatever whatever troops might be on that hex. Right. Lastly, on most cards, there are, there is a what they call scheme at yes. the bottom, which provides a specific action the peacemaker can do to again influence battle. Some very interesting. Some schemes. of them are, yes. Yeah, some of them and some of them are different than you might expect from a yes. peacemaker because. Um, there is one, for example, called food poisoning, right. which decreases the morale of the group. And you might say, that doesn't seem very nice. But keep in mind, the peacemakers are trying to achieve peace so that there isn't great suffering on exactly. both sides. The needs of the many outweigh the, the needs, needs of the few. few. That's correct. <laughs> is that trademark? Hopefully not. <laughs> now, it's important to note that not all these resource cards have all the available actions or abilities on them. Mm -hmm. So you may need influence, but you may not have it. Okay, let's see how this ties together. This is how each round would work. Each round consists of three phases. The adventurer phase, the army phase, and the status phase. In the adventurer phase, you're going to go through those resource cards. You're gonna be using actions. You're gonna be using influence, travel or move, secure, scheme, and end your turn, which draws new cards. Next is the army phase. During this phase, each army will draw one card from their ploy deck and one card from their task deck to create the left half and the right half of a new order. The army that acts first will be determined by the speed and type of task being performed. Lastly, there is the status phase. During this phase, you will check for either victory conditions or defeat conditions. If neither of those are met, the first player marker will be passed counterclockwise to the next peacemaker on the right, making the player who played last in this round, the first player in the next round. And then the next round begins. As you move through the 12 scenarios, you'll be adding new cards, a bit of a legacy feel to it. The game expands and grows as you move through the campaign. You'll know when to stop when you see a locked card. These cards will be designated for whatever scenario is next for the ongoing campaign. All right, just some final thoughts from us. So again, this is a Dice Tower paid preview and everything we've shown you here is prototype form. Mm -hmm. And the rules, we just wanna give you an overview, but things may change from what you saw here. Now, with that said, there are some very interesting things about this mm -hmm. game. Um, it's really a unique thing where you are you jump into a game where you're not just engaged in the battle. You're actually yeah. trying to stop this battle from yeah. happening. Yeah. And uh, I found it really intriguing. Yeah, it's it's a very different context here. A lot mm -hmm. of times when you're playing cooperative game, you're you're working together against some sort of onslaught that's, that's attacking you. For right. example, a, a horde of zombies, for right. example. Um, in this case, that's not the case. That's not the situation at all. You are kind of outside the battle, mm -hmm. and you have favored status with both sides. Exactly. So it puts you in a place where you're really solving this puzzle. You're, you're manipulating both sides. Yeah. And, and, and which that, is really, and you're really manipulating things in very unique ways. Right. It, 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 
it feels like you're a cross between Henry Kissinger and Niccolo Machiavelli. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because the things you're doing sometimes aren't always above board. Right. But ultimately, you're working for the health of both sides. Yeah. And the other thing about that is that you really have to be careful with some of those decisions. Moving troops, you can move them in and out of battles. And you have to be careful because if you lose too many, the cause side to surrender. Right, right. And you really do have to cooperatively work together really in a unique way. You do, and, and it's the balance you mentioned is, is very valid because you want both sides to ratchet down similarly. Right. Because if one side, you say, oh, I can get rid of five motivation from here real quickly, all of a sudden they're in a position, one army's in a position to roll over the other one. Right. And we also didn't want to give you too many details about some of these scenarios either because there's an ongoing, very unique story throughout all the scenarios in this game. And uh, there's some really neat surprises. Uh, we definitely were trying to keep this um, spoiler free. Mm -hmm. Now, if this is a game that looks interesting to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. Absolutely. So I think that's it from us. And until next time, we'll, we'll see you at, at the, the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.